folks, usually Captain Steve Concialdi, the PIO for the Orange County Fire Authority, is in our studio. But today, we came out to where you work, right here at the Orange County Fire Authority headquarters here up here in Irvine. And it's just a beautiful facility. And um, I understand that we're going to get a couple tours. We're uh, going to see the ditch, uh, dispatch center. Right. And uh, also, um, we're going to see where the uh, training facility is as well, right? Right. We have a state-of-the-art training facility where our recruits are training right now. We have 35 new firefighters that just got hired. They started just beginning of February, and they'll be in a 16-week academy. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see uh, both the, uh, the training ground here that uh, not only trains new recruits, but also keeps uh, you guys uh, fresh about all the new techniques and technology. And then we're also going to go up to the dispatch center to see how everything is done there to make sure you guys all stay safe. Well, if you've ever wondered where uh, the calls come in and then go out to the Orange County Fire Authority, all the different cities that uh, they oversee, this is the place. We're in the dispatch center here with Ryan Turner. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. And uh, what is your title here? I am the Senior Fire Communications Supervisor here. So um, one of my main jobs is to in charge of training of all the dispatchers here and making sure that they're all up on their skills. Now, I understand that they actually work 24-hour shifts. Is that right? That's right. We work, the dispatcher uh, crew here works 24-hour uh, shifts just like a firefighter. We have dorms here. Um, they work from 7 a.m. until 7 a.m. the next day. Uh, we have a break schedule for them throughout the day so that they're not on the floor for 24 continuous hours. They have break time and then sleep time as well. But that affords us as the opportunity to have a ready set crew of people that even though they're asleep, if we break a large incident, we can just page them out and get them back out here on the floor within just a couple of minutes and man up the entire center so that we can handle those large incidents or, or a busy uh, time of activity. Now, what are the actual calls that come in here? If I call 911, does it come here? Does it go to, you know, the OC sheriff? How does that work? That's a great question, and that's one of the most misunderstood questions, or one of the misunderstood concepts of 911. Here in Orange County, when you call 911 from a phone, be it a cell phone or a landline phone, you will always get the uh, police agency that covers the area you're calling from. So for Laguna Woods, you're covered by Orange County Sheriff. So your 911 call will go to the Orange County Sheriff department. Then they'll determine that dispatcher, wherever that dispatch center is, will determine what kind of an emergency is. Is it a fire, police, or medical problem? And then they'll transfer that call to us if it's a fire or medical related uh, situation, and then we'll dispatch the appropriate crews to the type of incident. So there's not a, a direct call in here from from the public. It first is going to go through uh, the sheriff's department or whoever it may be, That's right. and then gets transferred That's to right. here. Yep. That's how, and that's how it is really basically across the entire country. Um, uh, it just depends on where you are in the country and who picks up the phone first. It's usually going to be a police agency. Behind us here are all kinds of screens, obviously. And uh, this is where the dispatcher would sit, where we are right now. And uh, look at all uh, the screens here. This is where they're first, they're going to see a call come in. So actually the CAD system or the computer aided dispatch system is what we have up here displayed right here. And this is what the dispatchers work off of. We can create calls and dispatch calls through this system right here on this one screen. Um, the dispatchers here in our center are all cross-trained, which means that we have call takers and dispatchers. They do all the same function. Um, they can do it at any position here in the center. We have 14 positions just like this all throughout the center with all the exact same configuration. So if we ever have any kind of a power problem or a technical problem, a dispatcher can simply pick up where he is and walk over to another uh, position, sit down, and start doing their job. So a call comes in, let's say from Laguna Woods. Okay. It came, it was generated by 911, mm -hmm. goes to uh, the sheriff's department. It comes here and then they call, depending what the emergency is, they're going to dispatch station 22. Most likely. And most likely, and they're going to go out. Right. Now, obviously they can also see here if that station is busy, yes. Are they the ones from here that would then call the next station in line, or does it automatically do that? That's a great question. Um, our computer-aided dispatch system is based on what we call a fire station order. And so if, in, in essence, if station 22 was completely busy and all their units were gone, then the computer system would see that and then recommend, what we call recommend in the business, the next available closest unit based on the fire station order from the address that the incident is at. 
that's okay. base, that's the basic answer to that. Our dispatch crew is really trained really highly to be able to look at that screen, which may look confusing, mm -hmm. but they're able to look at that and be able to determine at quick glance uh, where units are, if they're available or unavailable. And so in the case of Station 22, it's funny that you bring that up, that is our primary cover station. So that means if that station goes empty because of activity level, we immediately cover it. That means that we'll find a unit in the area and actually literally move them into that station to take over until some 22 units come back. Wow, that's it. They actually, the, they will, yeah. the trucks actually will move over. Wow, that's that's impressive. So that's what that's what we're in charge of here is is fleet management, if you will. We look at the entire fleet, we look at the entire county, and we like we see where the openings and the empty areas are, and then we fill those areas. It's called move up and cover. So when he uh, when the dispatcher figures out where very quickly what station needs to to roll out. Does he get on the intercom here? You know, used to see that on the on TV and say station so and so, you know, we we got a fire going on. Or does he call the uh, the the chief of that station or the captain of that station? What happens is that when the dispatcher gets the call on their screen and it recommends a group of units based on what's going on. So let's say, for instance, it's a structure fire that's going to recommend three engines, a truck, a medic unit, and a battalion chief. That um, dispatcher hits one button and the notification goes out to all of those units I just stated. So their pagers go off, the, the little computers in their um, stations as well as their units all activate and it gives them the information for the call. The incident, where is it, what's going on, who called it in, and any specifics. So we're trained to get as much information as we can out to the field units even before they're on the road. And then within two minutes, we have everybody responding to that incident. So, um, and then at the same time, simultaneously Simultaneously, um, our dispatcher here is getting on a, a radio system and actually broadcasting the call. So he'll call out that those units that I just described in a kind of a roll call order and say structure fire at 1234 Main Street um, and give the frequency, the radio frequency that that uh, incident is assigned to and then um, that's it. That's kind of the magic. It goes really fast. So is the goal uh, to do all this within two minutes? Yes, the actual processing time is very fast. From the time that a dispatcher t picks up the phone and says, fire emergency, what, what, what's your emergency, where are you? That person has about a minute to determine where the person is, what's going on, and a callback phone number. Those are the three basic bits of information that we need to do what we call create a call. So when we create that call, then we send it to another position, to the dispatcher, and then that's when the CAD system recommends the closest available units based on what's going on and then that person has 10 seconds to look at what we call that recommendation that's coming in from the computer and that dispatcher looks at that recommendation and says I agree with it and then hits one button that notification goes out to pagers and computers and everybody gets notified they get on their units within two minutes and then they get on the road so from the time that somebody actually picks up the phone here to the time somebody gets on the road can be as little as three minutes well that's very impressive I, I have a question that the Orange County Fire Authority, it covers how many cities? 23 cities in the unincorporated area. What if a city uh, such as Anaheim or a city that has their own fire department, a 911 call comes into there and is determined it's a fire, mm -hmm. do they know to contact Anaheim Fire or does it clear through here first and then you contact Anaheim Fire? That's a great question. Again, it, based, it all 911 calls are based on where the person is calling from and that whoever picks up the phone is the determining uh, agency. So technically, a person could be on the border of Anaheim and Stanton, for instance, and they may be in a kind of a, what we call kind of a gray zone or a border area. Um, so sometimes, it, it just because of the technical difficulties trying to make sure everything is completely straight, we may get a call in our center for the city of Anaheim and vice versa, Anaheim Fire may get a, a call for a fire or a call in our area. We have a great working relationship with all of our non-OCFA fire departments. So if any situation like that occurs, we quickly are able to transfer those calls between each other. And also we have what we call mutual aid. So if Anaheim were to have a large incident within their city and they need additional help, all they have to do is call us and we will send them whatever they need and vice versa. If we need help, 
we can always uh, call them and they can bring in help as well. And we've seen this mutual aid system throughout our state and really throughout our country where we've had uh, some huge national disasters, right? That's true. But actually, uh, from a historical standpoint, California has led the way in the world of mutual aid. We are the ones that actually came up with that idea way long time ago because of our um, our propensity to have wildfires. And we knew um, early on, way back in the 40s and the 50s, that we really needed to have a statewide network, a statewide ability for one department to call for help from another or multiple departments. And so now, with the 21st century, with digital communications, with computer and the internet, now it's a nationwide way that we can ask for help. So, for instance, we had the 2008 freeway fire up in Yorba Belinda that was unfortunately burned a lot of homes, a lot of acreage was lost. Um, we were able to, from this center, put out a call for help, and we had help coming in as far away as Northern California and Arizona. But we didn't call them on the phone. We just put the word out through a very sophisticated software system, and that was able to transmit out, and then we got more help to come in. Wow, that's, uh, that is nice that we have that system. And uh, all this is its quite impressive. And uh, you're here, like you said, uh, every minute of the day when someone needs help. How long have you been uh, working for the department? I started here in August of 1994 as a dispatcher and worked my way up, and now I'm a, now I'm a senior supervisor. Well, thank you very much uh, for the interview and also for your service here because uh, we know how important this center is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.